What is going on? This is Michael Hacker with the Hacker Outdoors podcast. Today I'm joined by Joey, where we go over a little bit about our travel bug, wanting to get back out west, and of course we dive into some weird things such as lampreys. Uh, we hope you enjoy, and without further ado, so you're looking you're looking uh, quite hippie-ish over there today, brother. My long you hair. You should uh, let it go, maybe a little bit. It's just that. You know, not I'm not the, cutting the hair until it's it's ran out of good luck. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree. John so, Cox is doing the same thing, but I, <laughs> but he is working for him on the lead series. So, holy Mary, mother of, you know. So, everyone, welcome to the Hacker Outdoors <laughs> podcast. We are done, kind of gallivanting and and talking. We just talked on the phone a little while ago. Um, but it's always nice to catch up with family when we're not recording. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Brian will be a few minutes short or late or maybe a little bit longer than that, depending upon what's going on in the world with him. Um, you never know you never what's going know. on with B. So, yeah, I was showing my, my cat is hiding in, under the mannequin that's usually behind me. Um, oh, here he comes. He's coming out. He knows I'm talking about him. Um, so he... Uh, uh, bring him up here because he's gonna jump up anyway. Ah. Let me shrink this down so I can see see you and your lover. Oh, there he is. He's gonna he's gonna go up on his on his next spot. Okay, go on. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I banned it. Oh yeah, lay down. Okay. Um, so that's Finnegan, ladies and gentlemen. Finnegan's adventures on the Instagram. Um, for those of you interested in following along on him. Joe, man, a lot going on. Uh, I've been thinking a lot lately about travel, right? And I know you're lucky enough to have been out there and and have been traveling a lot in this, you know, we'll say the COVID's world, right? The vid-19 world. And not a lot of us have had that opportunity. Of course, I've, you know, I've gone up to upstate New York, done Lake George, um, planning on making another trip or two up there in the next uh, couple of weeks. But, um, man, I, I was, I'm dying to get out and I, I keep seeing these pretty cool things going on in the world and some not so cool things going on in the world. I'm a big proponent of, you know, traveling here domestically as much as I travel internationally. Um, been to about a little over three quarters of the United States, mostly by car. Um, and there's just some places I would love to get back to. And, uh, I sent you a link, you know, I have not been to Yosemite yet. I have been to California two or three times. I think it's two. And, uh, these guys skied down half dome <laughs> this, this, week. It, 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 I, I know I just, I literally just sent it to you right before you connected. Yeah. I, I, I've I, never been out there. So many, but I've seen um, half dome, and I couldn't imagine doing that or attempting to do that. I mean, these guys are obviously balls to the wall, man. Unbelievable, man. Like, I, I'm flabbergasted. I mean, my buddy Bob went out there a few years ago, they rented a they rented a van or something, and him and his wife, and they were traveling around California. and He's like, man, Yosemite was just unbelievable. First and foremost, he said that if you hike in California and you're wearing hiking boots, people make fun of you. I don't know if that's true. Um, I wear my hiking boots on a daily basis, so I I take that with a grain of salt. I, um, but he said that there's nothing in the world, like anything, if you see a picture of something, it never does it justice in the natural world. So I'm sure right. that all these beautiful photos that you've seen of Yosemite and Half Dome don't even come close to the awe i'm sure that inspires you when you're standing there in the valley looking up at it and these guys skied down at five thousand five thousand feet right yeah nearly five thousand feet insane i i don't really have words to describe it besides absolutely insane but you know you know like you said pictures never do justice never never do um but absolutely insane I, yeah. I, I can't just, even fathom it. I'm not saying the word right, but you know what I mean. I got it. I got it. <laughs> you, so it, it dude, it took them five hours to ski down. 
Like and that's you know, that's just nuts. Of course, they had to repel a little bit. When when we're done from here, you know, check out the video. We'll we'll link to it in the show notes. But uh, long story short, is this was not a trip up at Mountain Creek. Like this is something no. that's, uh, you know, no. Well, I, I didn't get a chance to read it, but that was the first thing in my mind. Like, are, is it repelling involved? I mean, yeah, climbing yeah. and repelling. Insane. Like, For- that's a whole other level and <laughs> almost unnecessary to me. And, you know, back in the day before I was injured, I, I loved taking things to the extreme. But right. it, that, that's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Well, I, you know, I, I went down that path of, of- – even before seeing this, just, you know, I miss the Southwest and Southwest has always been a place that just calls my heart. Right. And, you know, Don and I got married in, in Arizona, you know, in Sedona and we were talking favorite States. I love love Arizona. I love Arizona. I love New Mexico. New Mexico to me is one of those quintessential States that just like doesn't get the love that it deserves. And if you've been to New Mexico and you've been to some of the areas that I've been to, I think, Oh, I'll put it up on the old blog. I'll write about it a little bit. Maybe we can talk about it at some point, but um, it's something about Arizona and New Mexico, man. Like, uh, you know, I get all these emails and I'm on all these like groups and stuff like that for, you know, the national parks and the, the recreation areas and, um, you know, the hotels that I like to stay in Sedona. And um, I, someone had posted something and I don't know if you've ever made it up to Glen, uh, Glen Canyon national recreation area. Um, where, where is it on the border with uh, Utah, like in uh, Arizona? Uh, Arizona, yeah. I, I, I almost a hundred percent. I have. Um, last time I was out there, I was like twelve, and we spent like a month out there. And I'm ninety-seven percent sure we did go there. Yes, did, you went to Horseshoe Bend, I think, right? We were talking about that. Yeah, well, we went all over the place. Um, yeah, the one place we talked about was um, oh god, that that place where the caves where the native americans had the ladders up into the caves and and their homes were built into the, the cliff wall um montezuma montezuma yeah, national yeah, park montezuma. yeah we, we were all over the place um actually my my good friend mike who lives here in maryland his family also he also has family in arizona his grandfather bought property in arizona back in the 40s and he has like over 100 acres that he owns um not far from Tombstone, near the um, there's a uh, th- th- there's a place there where they used to film the old westerns. Uh, blanking on the name of the the studio, what's it called? Um, people have been there would know it. It's right by there, and it, it, it's his land's actually on that backs up the national park too. It's just absolutely beautiful land. I'm dying to get out there with him. Um, oh, I bet, man. I, I just. It- I can't wait to get out there, and I, I again, I should say, um, but we're we're watching Stanley Tucci. You know who Stanley Tucci is, the actor. No, I, that's one thing. Um, it's outside Bisbee, the the place, um, his place, and it's it's called Old Town. No, I'm not uh, familiar with it. Well, sure we, we're watching the show on CNN. It's called Searching for Italy with Stanley Tucci. And you know, I like the name. Say, I like Tucci. <laughs> this is Tucci. Um, obviously, it, he's a. Let me interject. I'm sorry. It's old Tucson. There we go. Okay, old good. Tucson. Um, but you know, they say most w- well travelers or well traveled people have been to Italy or will go to Italy seven times in their life, right? Um, the way I worked in tourism, and this is what was always told, right? Like when I worked for the travel club. I, I guess people who live in Europe, maybe. I mean. Americans and I can tell you, man. Like there are people that I know who have been. They don't really go anywhere else. They go to except Italy. And to me, it, it like don't, I'm not at all saying this. Like Italy is a beautiful country, and I've I've been there. I, you know, I would love to go back. I would love to spend time there. There's so many different regions to see, and so many different things to see. And I'm a history buff. You know, want to definitely get that out of, of my system. But like, I I like to balance it right. So like you do. You do a little bit of travel outside of the country and then you see a little bit inside the country because we have so much history and so much land to cover here within the United States that um, you got to do it. Um, now, I well, there's Arizona alone, like his house actually, his property backs up to Saguaro National 
park and his hundred acres there. I mean, if you've never been out there, Arizona, especially that area, it's a whole nother world. And we, like I said, we spent the month there and that didn't feel like enough to me. And I was a kid then, like, the Midwest, like people sleep. I know where we were going. I kind of interjected. People sleep on on what we have here in the United States, especially in the Midwest, what people call the flyover states. You know, right. the Dakotas, all all in there, just beautiful, diverse lands. It, and well, you you bring up a good point, man. I you know I I was lucky enough for one of my jobs to to go to Kansas and Missouri for opening a call center and. Um, like, I don't think in my wildest dreams, I would have ever been like, Hey, I'm going to go to Kansas city, you know, like Kansas city, Kansas and Kansas city, Missouri. Like, like, why would I ever go to Kansas city? I am sure as hell glad I did. Like, yeah. There, yeah. Uh, number one, fantastic barbecue. Big barbecue. It's good. Very good. Unbelievable. I ordered barbecue and it was, <laughs> I, I did take out. I brought it back to my hotel cause I was exhausted. I, I go to pick it up at this place that everyone had recommended at the call center that worked there. And um, they handed me, you know, like one of those big aluminum trays, like, like this wide, yeah, like this deep. And I said, I ordered ribs, a p- order of mashed potatoes and then something else. I forget what it was. And, I'm like, what the hell is this? And I get back to the hotel, I open it up, and they were four of the biggest ribs I've ever seen in my life, like like this. Yeah. Just massive ribs and just, uh, it was unbelievable. I won't say it was the best barbecue because I said <laughs> in the last podcast with Brian, we were talking about going down to Florida, I think uh, Maison's or Mel- Melson's or however the hell you say it, that was well, probably the best barbecue. There's so many different types of barbecue. I mean, mm-hmm. Carolina barbecue is completely different, and there's some places down in North Carolina that to die for their barbecue. But the best barbecue I probably had was in uh, Memphis. Really? Oh my we god! We just yeah. talking about Memphis. How I'd like to oh, yeah. I'd like to go to Memphis. Memphis is a cool place. Uh, Nashville is really cool. That was one place I I was probably what twenty. Nash- 20? Nashville, not Asheville. Nashville, North, Nashville, Tennessee, country music. Yeah. Yeah. We, we met um, when Stacy and I first started dating. Her father lives in Memphis area and um, he had a car for her. So we, we actually flew into Nashville, met them in Nashville. And Nashville was an awesome city. It really is really cool. Surprisingly, at that time, I wasn't into, really into country music, you know, and uh, that, that's an amazing place. Yeah, I haven't done that. I Brian and I talked about it a little bit about Tennessee and how we'd like to go to the Cherokee National Forest. And oh, that's fish. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, you know, outside of that, I, I drove through Tennessee. That'll be two times um, without having gone to Nashville. Don and I would definitely like to do it. Um, I think there's some other areas that I would like to see, like the Smokies and it's and whatnot. It, well, you know, a girl I did in high school. She she was Cherokee, and and her family were. were the chief of the tribe for year, I mean, hundreds of years. So I got to spend a lot of time down in Cherokee. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, poverty. There's, there's a lot of poverty around there and, and there too, but it, it, you know, people don't realize down South, you know, I'll see mountains loosely, but you know, 6,000 foot mountains. I mean, it, it's beautiful. And, and a lot of water, a lot of rivers, a lot of fly fishing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, people don't associate the Cherokee Indians with being actually from North Carolina, you know. Right. That's where right. They're from, you know? Yeah, it's a well you associated to being out west yeah, now yeah. because of the Trail of Tears. Yeah, the, all that horrendousness yeah, yeah. that happened. Um, but not to lay a little bit of um, you know, to that. So I was looking at Glen Canyon Dam, like I was saying, and I follow that and on social media and I, I, you know, Don and I go to typically the, the roads less traveled, right? Some of the sites that most people don't go to, or we go off season and we, we did some trails. We, we tried to go to Antelope Canyon up there, right? So this is right by Lake Powell. Mm-hmm. And Antelope Canyon. Fishing. Is one of, what was it? You should be fishing Lake Powell. <laughs> I should have been fishing, um, but <laughs> I didn't. Um, I, I fished, uh, what is it? Oak Creek Canyon in Sedona, but I did not fish. Like Powell's good fishing. Oh, I bet, man. There's so much water there. 
Um, but th they were saying Glen Canyon National Recreation Areas, their official page was saying that they had to remove over 800, I think it was 800 square feet of graffiti off the walls there. And that's, you know, across the entire area. So that's Antelope Canyon, that's, you know, Glen Canyon, that's all along. Um, and that made me think like reading a number one, that's disgusting. Don't do that. But number two, um, like, I want to go back to Arizona. Like, you know, like I didn't do antelope. Um, it was booked up. You have to book apparently way ahead of time in order to get out there. For what? For Ante antelope. Watching, I guess. No, to, to go hiking into the canyon. It's oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh man, but uh, yeah, that's my that's my rant for for the first uh, ten minutes or so here. I just you know missing Arizona, missing the West a little bit, and uh, can't wait to have it happen again. Get out there. It's been a while since I've been out there. Um, don't sleep on the East Coast, like North Carolina, South Carolina. Absolutely beautiful. Some of the most beautiful places I've been to. Uh, you know, going out to Lake Murray, that was really probably only the second time I was really in you know, off the coast of South Carolina and gorgeous, good people. Have you been to, have you been to Jekyll? Jekyll Island? I have. Yeah. I have yeah. Down in Georgia. Yeah, my mom. It's beautiful. Is your mom down there now? Well, my mom just said that Aunt Joanne uh, said that if we ever wanted to go down there, we could. I, I know. I've tossed the idea of going out. The, the problem is that, the, you know, first off, I'm crazy, so drives don't bother me. But that one is a pretty long drive because, you know, you're in Florida, basically. I mean, I, you're, you're right there at, at Florida. I mean, she has friends in Jacksonville, I think, the city there in Florida. And, and she says like a 30-minute drive, 40-minute drive for them. But it, well, the it, only good news is, is I can do the barbecue place if I go there. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Right there. You know, you, you got to hop off if you're going, you know, doing a barbecue trip. I'll tell you where to go in North Carolina to get some absolutely Banging barbecue. Yeah. I see I'll do I'd do the ride again. I think uh it didn't bother me as much as I think it bothers other people. But I you know, I drove cross country and like I said, I've seen over three quarters of the country pretty much by car alone. So it doesn't really bother me at all. Um I yeah, I the South is cool. I'd like to do a little bit more of Georgia, the Carolinas, um, like I said, Tennessee. Um but here you go. I, I, I had clicked on Glen Canyon National Recreation Area's Facebook page, and they have something payments increase for incentivized harvest of brown trout. Brown trout bonanza coming in April. Glen Canyon National Recreation Area is pleased to announce that beginning March 1st, the brown trout incentivized harvest program will begin making 30, a $33 payment for each brown trout harvested and turned in. Could you imagine? Hmm. Getting paid for brown trout? Yeah. But, you know, I, I told you they, they uh, down in the Potomac, they buy snakehead from you. There's actually a well, it used to be people who would wait there and buy them from you and you'd come in, but now there's actually um, stores, fish stores or whatever that, that buy snakehead. Well, this is crazy. So basically, it says that the brown trout population between the dam and Lee's Ferry has steadily increased since 2014 as adult brown trout feed on other fish threatening downstream native species. Okay, so there you go. It's, it's a, a conservation effort. So that's interesting. Um, man, this this you gotta see this picture of this brown trout, man. Holy shit, that is a big fish. As a beaut. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but me and Brandon were talking today. Some of these conservation people, because you know bass fishing, and he's working on a project down in South Carolina that that involves some private bass fishing areas and and maintaining them, and been talking to biologists, fish biologists, and stuff like that. If you actually saw, because I've seen this firsthand. How fish biologists treat bass and other fish in the water, it, they handle them a lot worse than we do. Way worse. You know, I've seen them in my local body of water. They, you know, first off, they shock the water to all the fish get completely just electrocuted, knocked out for a better term. You know, pick them up, rip rudder, and just psh, chuck them back in. Like you wouldn't believe it. So sometimes some of that conservation stuff, I, I, I kind of question. Like, no, I saw the whole snakehead thing here and, and you know, Christ, he had sci-fi shows about how snakeheads, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they were so worried it was just going to ruin all the bass fishing in the Potomac and this, that. And I believe it, it actually helped it. It, well, it didn't do the damage they thought it was going to do. 
like yeah. I said, also in other countries, bass are considered evasive species and kill on sight because they're worried that the bass are going to destroy their lakes. When all reality in America, we know that's not the case. Yeah, well, yeah, I've seen that. So, you know, the Delaware uh, Gap recreation area, right? They, they posted something about snakeheads on like not releasing them if you catch them. And um, I, I haven't seen one yet. Um, you know, a lot of the guys in the forums are posting them in South Jersey, you know, up where I well, am. They, they are in the north end of the bay. So I, I'm sure they're in Delaware, right there in the Jersey. Bird. I'm sure they're there. Yeah, well, that's that's what they're saying is that people are catching them there. I mean, I've seen other other creatures that supposedly aren't supposed to be up there, but uh, you know, is what it is. You know, I understand when it, when it first happened. You know, it was kind of they didn't know, and, and I guess when you hear a fish who can live out of water and has these teeth, you know, you know, they were saying that what was going to happen was they were just going to destroy all all the forage, just eat all the bait and eat all this, and leave no food for the other fish it just wasn't the case right why well, brian and i we were we were fishing a, a stream we'll say somewhere out in that western region here of new jersey um the one that i i don't frequent as much as i as i should anymore it's become kind of overrun um but man freaking we were hiking along the river you know typically we, we park where you can park where everyone is and we just walk for miles and miles and miles and sometimes we walk in the middle of the stream, sometimes we walk on the bank, depending upon where we are and if we can, if there's a trail or walk on the bank itself. Um, but we were walking in this one section of the river that was just unbelievably gorgeous, no one around. And I'm like looking in the water, it's crystal clear water. I'm like, what the heck is that? And like you see it from far away and like this like line in the water, it kind of looked like a thick stick. And I'm like, that is not a stick. What is that? So we get closer and closer and closer. And it was some, it was something laying on the bottom of the water. So you can look closer through it. It was a lamprey laying. Like now lampreys live in the Delaware River and they they like waterfalls, they like latching onto things. But like this was uh, where we were in order for this fish to make its way, I believe it's a fish, to make its way from the Delaware River up this brook, like we are hundreds and hundreds of feet above the Delaware well, River. Think of it like this. If a fish, if a bird grabs a fish, has a lamprey on it, eats the fish, the lamprey falls off. I was like, well, this guy it was, happens. Um, yeah, <laughs> this, this guy was dying. You know, he was. Roger. Uh, yeah, we, you know, I, he was upside down and his mouth was open. If you guys don't know lampreys, you know, picture a, a circle and they just got these giant teeth that are, um, you know, in circles. So basically they latch onto something and they, uh, they don't let go because their teeth hold on. And then they have this like razor sharp tongue that they gore the, ins you know, basically the insides out of whatever it is they've latched onto. Um, but the mouth was facing upwards and, you know, we poked it a little bit and, you know, it didn't swim away and, um, you know, it would move like an inch and then just start to fade away. So uh, needless to was say, we left cold? it. Was it warm or cold or? It was, it was warm water, water hot water. It, it was cold, the water, um, but it was warmer out. Like it was, I would say the air temperature was probably in the 70s. Um, the water temperature was in the 50s. You know, maybe a little. I, I don't know much about them. I just know I don't like them. No, they freaked they me out. They kind of freaked me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, caught fish. I've caught bass with them on, on there. Well, how big was the one that you, that was on the bass? Let's, let's talk about that. It was like a three, three and a half pound bass. So let's say it was like 18 inch bass. I mean, it was probably like. Oh, it, when, when I say this thing, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have to find the picture. And if I do, I'll post it. I would say probably four inches, five inches. It was pretty yeah. long. No, this guy was like, like four feet long. Uh, that, I don't and, think and that like was a lamprey. This. And it was a lamprey, man. It was massive. That's not like the lamprey. That's must have been like some weird exotic lamprey somebody released in there. Um, I apparently they're eating well, man. Um, that's I'm looking, I'm looking for it. It was insane. That's ginormous. Man. It was so big. I, it was it was creepy, and to think that you know people swim in these, in these How lakes. How thick and these was rivers. it? It was 
Like, is it probably like this? Like a softball? <laughs> like, a, like, like between a baseball and a softball, yeah. Dude, you should have caught that thing. That would have been a record. I mean... <laughs> Oh, it was, it was, you know, wouldn't count because it was kind of dead. So let me share the, we'll share a screen. We could, so people can see what the lamprey is that they don't know. Oh, yeah. Let me make this real big for y'all. Figure out how to use my pewter. Da da. Yeah. Yeah. Th is this is um the one I caught. There's a picture one on the bass. Yeah. Look at those creepy, uh, like, like, you know, I've never on seen one that big, like you're saying. I mean, that's, so it was like that. I'm God. That's a sea lamprey, though. Wait, which one? Which one did you just click on? Or that's a. It's, oops. This one. It was like that, man. That's a sea lamprey. I wonder if somebody released something there because that's a sea lamprey, according to that. Yeah. Dude, that that's crazy. Well, we'll keep in mind though the Delaware uh, River. Uh, oh, it's so creepy, dude. That is, uh, you know, those things are for those of you listening. You know, do yourself a favor if you're not squeamish and. And look. At oh, no, no. Those are what nightmares are made out of. It is what nightmares are made out of. I'll find it. I, I, it's five million freaking pictures in my iPhoto album. Well, um, I can tell you some story. Uh, my good friend Joe, his wife Sarah, you know, she was born and raised in Erie. Her brother Pete was a lifeguard on Lake Erie. And, and he, he told me stories of people actually swimming and getting the lampreys, like clamping onto them. No, no, thank you. While we were swimming in Lake Erie, I'm like, yep, nope. No, no, we're we're good. No, don't need that in my life. No, I'd probably freak out and burn myself, light myself on fire. <laughs> it probably wouldn't be good. Well, it's bad enough. Like, have you ever had leeches? Like, do you ever get a leech? Nope. Right? And I've been in some furry situations down Waccamaw River. <laughs> I've never, never, I've seen them. I've never had one. Well, the, 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 yes. ever since I've the, seen Stand by Me, like I've been freaked out by those. I mean, everybody's seen that movie. I mean, they should have a good idea why. But. Right. Well, I I don't like them. I know them, of course, from Stand by Me, but like I've never seen one. And Brian and I have been, I would say, even by myself and with even the wife, like in some places probably where they they should exist, and I haven't seen them yet. I've seen this monster lamprey. That that's bizarre. That, 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 like. I've never heard of one that big. I, I know the, the sea ones get huge like that. So it almost makes me wonder if uh, maybe it swam up from the ocean on the Delaware River and, and ended up there. I, well, keep keep in mind, we, you know, the Delaware River, right? You get striped bass that swim up it. You, yeah. get, uh, you get the shad run that happens. And how far did the striped bass swim up there, though? Do you know, you know, I don't it, know. it can't be that far. It really... Philadelphia. I, 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 I've, I saw, I've heard of it going as far as Philadelphia, which that's pretty close I, to the... Bay. I saw I saw a dead one when we were fishing it this summer, and we're we're talking about like maybe ten miles south. I'm just throwing that out there, not to give my spots. We'll say maybe ten miles south of of um, the the gap itself. So, so I I wonder if those are like freshwater hybrid. like hybrids, yeah. Because I, I don't know because they'll run here when they run up the bay. They will run all the way up the Susquehanna River to the Conowingo Dam, which in the grand scheme of things is not that far from the bay. It's really not a huge distance. I mean, that would be a long run if you figure they're coming in from Delaware, you know, all the way up to there. I mean, that it almost makes me think they would be hybrid, but you, I mean, I, I could very well be wrong. But you never know, right? I, never I, know. I, I could well, tell by the one. Well, you ever could, watched, yeah, yeah. Have you ever watched uh, River Monsters? Which are I have. Made? I have. Okay. So remember the episode that he had where they went um, to Australia and they were talking about the bull sharks. Yep. The bull shark attacked someone like literally it was like a hundred miles away from the ocean. Yeah. Like like fish find a freaking way, man. Like animal life finds a way, right? If we learned anything from Jurassic Park besides the fact that velociraptors and my cat can open doors, oh. uh, it's that life finds a way. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know... I, the striper thing, that would be absolutely amazing to me because, I mean, that's a long run from the ocean, like a long, long run. The, re the reason we get them up in the Susquehanna is because the bay connects to Susquehanna and they'll run into the bay to feed and whatnot. But that would be a huge run. I mean, it, anything's possible, 
hundred percent. I don't discount it, man. It's like, you know, the, the guy I was asking a couple months ago about the, um, we talked about it here about there being large cats in Jersey and, you know, we talked about it, uh, you know, I don't remember if it was episode three or somewhere around there, but, you know, people categorically deny the fact that we have oh, large animals. animals in New Jersey. We, you know, we don't have moose. So, you know, I linked to it before, you know, we don't have this, that life finds a way to migrate. Like we, well, see, we that's think- easy for me to believe because they were there before, you know, I, no, I do agree with what you're saying. So like the like cats roll. Fish will find a way. Yeah. Some of the things people told me about stripers, it, it, I'm not saying it's not possible. It just sounds more likely to me. Maybe it's a hybrid. I mean, Christ, how many miles do you think that is up to I'm Delaware? I mean, from the bay. There. I mean, that's a that's a long run, man. Yeah. A long, long run. And you, you know, anything's possible. Right. I would love to see the fish, and I, I would have been able to tell you with pretty accuracy if it was if it was a hybrid or if it's a true. Yeah, and it was it was floating and i was moving too fast to get it or get a photo so i can tell you that i i I saw it i knew that it was a striped bass it was looked like like a striped bass you know you see it and you know that it's a bass um but yeah man freaking crazy it is i'm still flipping through my photos here man i'm only on june 20th of 2014 looking for it i'm on surfing so uh, the lamprey I'm looking oh. for your lamprey. It's somewhere. You, you got to show me this picture because I've never. Was it on your? Is it on your book of faces? No, no, no. I never posted it there. It's on my. Um, I'm looking at my photo photo album, and I have so I, I, freaking photos in here. Holy cow! That, a cool thing though is a goby up north when you catch gobies. Those little things, they're really cute. Are they? Yeah. Have you ever seen a goby? Like, have you ever seen no, a picture show, of a goby? No, yeah, show me a picture. Show you a picture. They look like some like. Japanese anime, like you know, you what you would think like an anime cute fish would be kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. let's see. I'm to find a good picture of what they look like. Yeah, here you go. Let me share screen. <laughs> These little guys. Oh no! Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. All right, I didn't know that was their name. Yeah, they look. <laughs> hey, don't they look like some like? I don't know. And they're really cute when you catch them. Like they're like small, like this one. Let me see if I can blow it up. I, you can't see it now, but like that one, like they're cute. They, they called them, yes. For example, New York was calling them invasive species, and they were so worried that you know they were going to do all this damage to the waterways up there. Mm-hmm. Well, the opposite has happened. You know, let me stop sharing. The St. Lawrence River and other smallmouth fisheries up there have just became amazing, and, and because of the gobies, like in the St. Lawrence, you know. The small mouths are growing there are humongous, unlike anywhere in the world. And it's because they're just, the gobies there now, and they're just gorging on these things. Like, you know, back Was in the that, day, like, I don't know, maybe 15, 10 years ago, if you, you know, four, four, five pounds would be huge. Now, an eight pound small, he's like, oh, somebody got an eight or six or seven. I mean, that's a humongous small mouth. When, you know, when they're having tournaments and you get, you got to win with like 22, 24 pounds of small mouth that you didn't be top 10 that is ridiculous yeah i I mean yeah i you know it's a i'll go back to it man life finds a way like there's the the asian carp i can understand why they were worried about the asian carp because of how fast they breed Mm -hmm. and how they just take over water like to me that's a founded fear and they knew that from the get-go and you could see what it's doing you know on parts of the river right you know little bait fish like go it's like understand how that could just something else is going to eat it you'll be all right right it's a a food chain you know right well you know and that that brings me to the um lantern fly right like here in the east coast it's a freaking disaster right but like nothing eats it because it's bitter like and i when when i was out on on one of the lakes this past year and they you know the end of 2020 fishing and they were all dying at the end of the season and they're all on this top of the water like i was waiting to see if these like other fish were just gonna be popping up and eating all these things I mean, yeah they touch it, were they? You never know, right? <laughs> no they weren't touching your mind well, not that i saw um, the east, right like not i'm a fish i do know. Down. I mean, <laughs> i'm looking was, actually at, it's crazy to me that, that 
that's Since like a, you all the time, like just in the past, species. you know, there's crawfish at in some the, point in the I'm river sure over fish here. are going to start and eating the same river curious. that people claim there are no past. Knows, Maybe not. Really. If it tastes like crap, you know, I, people who say, that, bitter, yeah, you know, because I, of the, the type of tree that they, they, they just don't really know when, when bass have like crawfish and chad and other bait fish, you know, why are they going to eat something bitter? Fish. I'm not saying that in a mean way. On a brim or some places you can look at and think maybe it's because it's more all fish. I mean, Humans uh, eat crawfish. Urbanish, you know. Oh, there's no fish there. Oh, yeah. they, they, do, they do, man. They live. Oh, oh, they they have the choice to I mean, eat something that tastes delicious or something that's that maybe not delicious to them. Used, I know. You know, we don't go there anymore just because it's so disgusting at this point. Because if they're starving, it, yeah. But it is who knows? pretty much as quote unquote urban as you can get. And these bass, man, are massive. And and then you carp there and you catfish there. I mean, I wouldn't eat anything out of that river. Or that section yeah, yeah. of the river but like like holy cow man like that has nothing to do with it like the but you know when you see foundation species like crawfish and you see these mollusks that are in the water like you know that the water quality is at least decent enough to sustain you know an ecosystem right and everything feeds on it, each other and that's that's a beautiful thing um but if you don't see that, you know, you're still going to see carp and you're still going to see some bullheads or whatever else the hell that's in there. He cats. I hate catfish too. I know you Catfish do, and carp. Yeah, I because know. when you're trying to win money and fish for bass or just fish for bass in general and, you know, you hook up with what you think is a five, six pound bass and next thing you know, your line's death rolling and it's slimed up and you got to retie and their stupid barbs on their fin can pierce you and not for me yeah. man nope. uh, i want to i want to go catfishing again once it warms up a little bit i'm gonna well, all you got to do i mean chicken liver dip it in some red kool-aid get it on the hook you said that man you said red kool-aid i didn't believe you i still i haven't yeah. done the red kool-aid I, you know what worked for me was i took liver and wrapped it in oh dude here it is I found a picture. Get away. Right, hold on. Hold on. Um, but before I do that, so he um, just wrapped it in a hot dog. And the hot dog casing kind of kept the liver. Yeah. People do all types of crazy stuff to catch those stupid things. Yeah. All right, let's see. Da, da, da. Come on, baby. Share. Share this. And... I want to vomit in my mouth. Let me. Do you, do you see it? So that was it underwater. Yeah, it looks like a sea lamprey. Hold on, hold on. So, hold on. Can I a lamprey? Look at that. Yeah, that's not the lampreys we're talking about, dude. A hundred percent. That's a sea lamprey. I Google sea it. lamprey and pull it up and share the screen. Yeah, yeah. that's a sea lamprey. I how the hell it got there? Couldn't tell you, but that that's a hundred percent a sea lamp, right? Yeah, see, two thousand seventeen, man, that was a while ago. Oh, yeah, hold on, you gotta see. Were you shore. fishing down by the shore? No, oh, man, this is in this is in Sussex County. Yeah, because there's pictures I was trying to show you. Let me see if I can find. It. Look, look at you... look at the side of this thing. Look at that. This is the quintessential. Look at the look at the dots. Yeah, that that, that that's that's a sea lamp, right? Um. Actually, go back to that picture. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, where the hell? I'm sorry. This is I'm almost 190 percent of the sea. <clears throat> you see it? Yeah, see that? It's a sea lamp, right? Let's see if I can get a good. Yeah, that's what that is. And that? That's... How the hell did it get? Looks Dude, like it's chopped up. When when we're Hold on. right here, yeah, it looks like something attacked it. Um, but I, you know, I, um, I'll show you on a map where we found it. I have marked it on my, on my Google maps and like that thing was all this picture up. far as heck away, but I will, I'm, I'm happy to say that according to my photos here, my photographic evidence, I caught a trout like 10 minutes later, a beautiful, beautiful rainbow. Yeah, that's bizarre. That could be one of those things where like a bird. I don't want to fish and flew from the sea. I mean, that's 
Yeah. I, I took a video. Look at this. Big one. Hold on. I'm going to press pause and I'm going to share my screen to show. This is my video YouTube, so don't don't try and block my crap. They won't unless you strike yourself. <laughs> Can you see this? Go ahead. Yeah. All right, all right. Look, it looks like a looks like that branch moving? right there. I think it's like chopped. That's a sea lamprey. See its tail. Look, look. Either that or you found some new species. Well, that's always possible. You never hey, look, see, look, see, look, look. That's just a hundred percent. It's a sea ramp lamp right. Green. <clears throat> see it? See it? Yeah. See the tail. I see I gotta do a little bit of see research it? now. You're making me think like I need to see it? figure out New York yeah. State Environmental Sea Lamp right. Yeah, those aren't the same as like these ones. I mean that yeah. that thing is like looks like a completely different. <clears throat> well, bizarre. the thing was huge. I mean, if it's not, I mean that's like the world record. <laughs> Regular ramp lamprey. I mean, because these are what they look like on Lake Superior. So, yeah. so I, I uh, these are big on Lake Superior. Oops. Do you see? Look, look, look at Do the, you see the guy caught. Yeah, they're going. Not even, not even five minutes after seeing that. Lamp Do you break. see? You know who that is? You... Silence of the Lamb was it? Fear the Dragon or whatever? Fear Do you the... see? I was talking. Brian, Brian never believes me. Sometimes when, when we're like around the bend from each other, of course we're not screaming. We're like, I caught a fish or a fish on. You're kind of quiet because you're in the woods, yeah. right? And, you know, he was down around a bend, and it's like took a video and i said to him i said do you see like i caught a fish do you see every time you see that all i can think of is that movie do you see i see <laughs> you guy thinks she's a dragon well that that was the not the first one right that was the second one it was the red dragon it was the second one red dragon yeah yeah or the dragon yeah that it was, was the red dragon he goes to dc to the museum and eats the painting you think it's the... oh my god yeah, his mom that. no mom <laughs> that's the whole series creeped me out, dude. That one's uh, that one's good. It has, what's his name in it? Who died of um the guy he kidnaps? The reporter's a real famous actor, heavy set guy. He oh, was in uh, Patch Adams. Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman. That's yeah. It. Yeah. Well, that's a good movie. Uh, great freaking movie. Hey, we had a fox in the yard last night. Let's Did you? That for a moment. Beautiful. Like triggered the camera at like. I think it was like three thirty in the morning. Still no. Uh, what, what, you, what did you see that you're trying to catch now? What did you? What did you tell me you saw the other I day. I saw a coyote, and we're trying to catch it on film. Um, haven't been successful uh, at least yet. The trail cam has been up in the back for about two weeks. I haven't checked. Eh, maybe it's been about a week and a half. I haven't checked in about that long. Um, you might have it on there by now. This guy actually triggered the outdoor camera, so the doorbell cam. Uh, he was running up and sniffing. Um, yeah. yeah, man, we uh, we get a good amount of wildlife here. My buddy was up here helping me with the tiling this past weekend, and he goes, man, he's like, I feel like we're in freaking New Hampshire up here. Like, really not. I mean, you're still really close to everything. Everything. Absolutely. I mean, you're not far from urban area at all, really. No. No, in the grand scheme it's... of things, not far no. at all. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. Oh well. We, always, we loved having you up here. We still do. And uh, one of these days, we'll invite you over for some mozzarella. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching Hacker Outdoors podcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we will talk mozzarella. You Enjoy yourself some mozzarella and uh, some capicola <laughs> or a capicola and a coffee light and sweet. <laughs> coffee light and sweet. All right, everyone. Thank you. All right, so that was the Hacker Outdoors podcast with Michael Hacker, Brian Hacker, and of course, Joey McCormick. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating on whatever platform you're listening to or watching this on. Please check the show notes for some links about the topics we discussed today. And as always, we thank you for listening.